Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to the Education on Fire podcast network. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. There comes a time in every person's life when you realise it's not about doing what you are told, but doing what you know is right for you. Let us take a journey of learning and discovery with the world's most successful people who are living the life of their dreams, walking through life using their inner wisdom and being of service to others. Forget exams, grades and test scores. What is your purpose? As we let go of what we think should be and learn from our elders to gain knowledge, inspiration and a true sense of who we are. What are your dreams? Does your life have meaning? Are you living a life of significance? Let's talk with today's guest. Hello and welcome as we spend some more time together on the Learning on Far podcast. My name is Mark Taylor. Today I'm talking to Shane and Jocelyn Sams. Hi to you both. Thanks for joining me and let's explore the journey of who you are. All right. Thank you so much for having us today, Mark. Hey, man, I appreciate you for having us on. There's going to be some serious accents banting about here today. So you got some Appalachian and some UK. This is going to be an amazing show. <laughs> so why don't we start with that accent? Let's let's explain to everyone exactly where you are. I, I think that most of the audience here in the UK would turn around and say America, but beyond there, they're maybe not quite so sure. <laughs> that is probably true. All right. We are uh, Shane and Jocelyn Sams. We are originally from Kentucky. Uh, in the United States of America. We are former school teachers. Jocelyn and I spent about um, a decade of our life, the first 10 years or so of our marriage, in the education system. Jocelyn was a librarian, and uh, I was a social studies teacher. But we um, we got into the world of entrepreneurship a few years ago, somewhere around 2012, 2013. And uh, we started a business that became really, really successful online. We had an education company and a sports coaching company where we uh, gave resources to teachers and coaches. And uh, we started making a lot of money on the Internet. So we actually quit those teaching jobs. And for the last six or seven years, we have been full-time, work-from-home, online entrepreneurs. And if you recognize uh, somewhere in the back of your memory, it may be that you actually heard Jen and Jocelyn and also um, both of their children chatting on a, an episode of Education on Fire when I was doing my season about what the children think about schooling and education. And so you may well have heard them back then. But also, I need to let you into a little secret. And as much as I know Shane and Jocelyn, having met them in person at a, a live event in Nashville back in 2018, um, and also I'm part of their online community as well. So we're going to make sure that we get the benefit of your experience, because of course, I know what a lot of that experience is already. I want to make sure that everyone listening can really gain from all the, the great insights that I get from you almost on a daily basis. Well, thank you so much for those kind words. We love that you're a part of our community, and we're very thankful to have been on your show before. Yeah, that's what we love about you and your podcast, Sam, because like, you're so mission-based, and like you're really passionate about the topics you talk about. And you know that's what we're really passionate about, is helping other families you know, be able to build and find a lifestyle that they can live, and maybe even make a little money online and kind of create that business that they can work from home too. So let's do it, man. Yeah, it's a great thing. And having a uh being able to share this wisdom with our children and and uh, and it's one thing i know that you're doing through your homeschooling and and that idea of actually being able to really make sure that everyone knows that you can create your own life and, and i'm sure that'll start to develop as we start to chat a bit more so it sounds already from the bit of information you've given us that your life previously to what it was now is is going to be slightly different but what does your life look like now and how is it different from when you were growing up you know, when I grew up, we, uh, you know, Jocelyn and I, we both came from blue collar families, you know, working people in southeast Kentucky and in western Kentucky. You know, uh, Jocelyn, actually, a lot of her family was in coal mining. And, uh, you know, uh, my father, he was uh, he owned a restaurant. He was an insurance salesman. So he had a little bit of entrepreneurship going, but it was just local businesses, that normal lower middle class like American lifestyle. Right. And now our life looks way different than I ever could have imagined <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up and I kind of imagined, I guess I'll work for my dad someday or, you know, maybe I'll get a job. You know, I went to school and I decided I wanted to be a teacher and coach some American football and, you know, do some things like that. And, you know, when we got into the system, when we got into the working world, you know, we've worked corporate, we've worked government jobs, we've been educators and we just kind of really felt like we needed something different, like we needed something more, especially control over our time and control over our life. And uh, that's what we've built for ourselves today over the last six or seven years. You know, we work from home, we're online entrepreneurs, we're podcasters, um, we're business consultants, business coaches. We have 
uh, multiple businesses. Uh, we do real estate stuff. We do some other businesses online. And, uh, you know, we spend most of our time together hanging out with our kids. We've uh, got about 40 acres here in Kentucky, and we get to, you know, float around on our, the lake outside our house every day. And it is really, really different than anything I ever could have imagined for myself. I actually was getting out of basketball practice last night, and my the guy I'm coaching with, uh, he looked over at me. He, we used to live in his neighborhood, and then we moved out of it when we quit our jobs so that we could build our company. And he said, man, did you ever think that – when you were moving out of that neighborhood that your life would look like it does now. And we said, Nope. <laughs> like, this, like you can't possibly imagine this. You know, at first you're just imagining freedom. At first you're just imagining staying home and working in your pajamas. Right. You can't imagine like what's actually out there, you know, when you put your mind to it. So, you know, it's been a, been a crazy journey so far. And I think it's really great for us all, all to hear that actually, it's very easy to think, oh, my life has to look like this because it's what I knew my family did. It's what my, my grandparents did. It's, it's what I'm always told, that story about, you know, go to school, learn this, do that, get a job, maybe go to university, whatever, whatever that story is that's always ongoing. But uh, week in, week out to hear people saying, well, I'm, that's kind of where I came from, but that now my life looks like this and, and now it looks like that. And I tried this and I did this, but I couldn't imagine it, but it is so different. And I think when you hear that enough times, it really gives you that sense of actually anything's possible and actually i really can take it in any direction i want and and i think some of the the messages you're going to be giving us is going to give us a real great idea about how you how that's possible yeah absolutely and you know i can say from my perspective you know shane kind of covered a lot of it that i can both of us come from middle class background you know when i was young we didn't get to do a lot of traveling and that's something that's really important to us now is that we go to a lot of different places with our family we do a lot of different kinds of experiences and, you know, I always try to emphasize to my children that experiences are greater than things. You know, things are nice, they're fine, but it comes, there comes a point where you really can't have any more things or you don't need any more things. And so that's when those experiences come in. That's yeah. something that's really important to me. It's really interesting, Mark, because like, you know, growing up, I didn't fly on an airplane until I was 20 years old, right? So I, I had never been on an airplane until I, you know, I was an adult, basically. And our kids right now are 10 and 8, and one thing that blows our minds is flying is normal to them. Like, they have passports, they know how to pack their bag, they wheel it up and put it through security. They've been to multiple different countries now. Yeah, they've flown like 20 times in their young lives, and that's probably one of the best examples of how, you know, when you change your life, when you pursue a dream, and when it comes into fruition— you can just really look at it in a mirror and say, this was before and this was after, and this is the opportunity they have. Like, like we can't even imagine what the next level looks like. That's actually one of the hardest challenges we have right now is figuring out, well, what is next? What does the next level look like? What does, you know, what are our kids going to say in 30 years? Like, well, this was my childhood and now my kid gets to do this. And as you keep opening doors, more and more of these opportunities keep opening for you. And, um, you know, so that's what we're focused on right now is just opening as many of those doors as possible to see what's on the other side. It's great. And, and, and a lot of the story that I, I hear when you're sharing all these things is always the fact that it's, it's about experiences. Like you said, it, it's about being able to go somewhere. It's about sharing time. It's about creating exactly, like you say, the life that you want to do. But it's also that kind of and we don't quite know what's next as well. It's not that I know that in 40 years' time I'm going to finish getting my paycheck and I'm going to be doing this and, like you say, my son or my daughter is going to take over the family business. It's going to be – they're probably going to do something maybe completely different, but based on right. what you're showing them, and that's the key, isn't it? It's leading by example. The, the funny thing is, like, whenever you're trying to change your life in any way, like, you know, because we, we coach hundreds of people online and we see, like, literally thousands of people through our podcast and through our – uh, community like trying to change their life, trying to make changes, trying to start a business, trying to do something different, trying to pursue a new passion, whatever it is. The biggest fear that always holds people back is, well, I don't want to mess up what I've already got. I can predict what's going to happen. I've got the job. I just put in my time. I get the retirement. Like it, it is trying to be predictable. But then the fear is if you disrupt that, it's going to become unpredictable. Right. But now on the other side of making it actually happen, I fear the other side. I fear that predictability. I fear falling into that complacency of just, just keep marching to 65 until you retire. And the fear kind of flips the other way. The change and the excitement of what's next, even though it's uncertain, is way better than that 
complacency and consistency of just keep marching forward until you know death <laughs> so so it's just funny how it looks like on both sides of the fence uh, when you really think about it yeah for sure um and talking about that sense of uh, sort of being hemmed in a little bit um we now get to the point where we talk about our school experience and the only reason i say that is because my daughter's often said that uh, certainly here in the uk that the, the safeguarding is such a big thing now and they just put they said it's like being in a prison there's like you know eight foot fences around everywhere partly to keep the kids in and to stop people from outside coming in as well but that sort of sense of being trapped is something which is sort of a physical thing but also a kind of an emotional thing and a learning thing as well but but within that there's obviously some valuable experiences as well so I'm keen to hear what you found valuable about your school experience from when you were younger. Yeah I think for me it's just you know I really value routine and I guess predictability in my life and I always have so for me school was kind of normal I guess you would say as a child and um, you know I think Shane was kind of the opposite he kind of likes to rebel against routine and normalcy and everyday (laughs) things Um, so I think that we kind of had a different school experience but for the most part I mean I had a very I guess you would say an average American school experience you know I got good grades I was well behaved but I graduated high school with that same mentality that a lot of people have you know okay well I'm gonna go to college I'm gonna get a good a good job and I'm going to retire and ride off into the sunset well once we got out of college out of high school out of college um and went on to our jobs, we're kind of like, um, maybe this is not what we really want. Yeah, Jocelyn definitely would thrive in a school environment because it's like there's a nice system. It's easy to figure out. She can fall in line and kind of do that. And I'm more of the buck the system kind of person. I got in trouble a lot, Mark. I, my, school, <laughs> my school experience was an extended school experience because I was often in uh, what we call Saturday detention right. here in the uh, United <laughs> States where you had to go to school extra because you got in trouble during the first five days, <laughs> right? Um, but you know, what's funny is what I really learned looking back, okay, I probably didn't know this at the time, but the most valuable thing that school taught me is to like find the things you actually do like and pay attention to those because there was a lot of things I didn't like about school. I didn't like people telling me what to do. I didn't like that prison like environment, but when I, and and there were a lot of classes that I just flunked, (laughs) like I didn't do very well in, right? Um, some of my teachers actually see me now and they're like, wait a minute, you do what? You're this successful? Like, how did you accomplish this? Like, that's amazing. And uh, mostly it was because I found my lane. I I knew a couple things I really liked in high school. I really liked politics and history. It's the only subjects I would actually pay attention to. So guess what my college degree ended up being in? Politics and history, right? Education in history, things like that. Um, I used to love the tech stuff. I was actually the producer of, a, of the media show, like the, the weekly school news show. And I loved it because they would just, I just got to go in this basement all day and edit video. And I got to tell people what news stories to cover. And like, I was kind of the leader of the, you know, this little rebellious bunch of punks that were walking around school with cameras. Right. And like, you know, that, but I learned that I love tech and I, that those are skills that I still use every day. Right. And I kind of also figured out, you know, I didn't need some of that other stuff. And that's how life really works. It's not about being good at everything. It's not about trying to do everything so everybody, my status increases in everybody's eyes. Like, I don't care if I'm as good at you at lifting weights. I don't care if I'm as good at you running a marathon. I don't care if I'm as good at you as sales. I've got my things. And as long as I can play my game to the best of my talents and the best of my ability, I will succeed. And I don't really need that other stuff. So even though I graduated, you know, with barely enough grades to graduate, the, I, I, my A's were in the things I loved and I kept pursuing those things and that's really really what matters so that's what I learned from school it's kind of counterintuitive I learned that you don't have to pay attention to all that stuff you don't have to be good at everything you just got to be good at what you want to be good at and then go be great at it and you're going to be successful like in your life so that, that's what I got from school yeah I love it and I think it's so it's so empowering for people to realize that actually it might not be whether you're good at maths English science music geography whatever it happens to be 
but within the you know, I mean you're in school for a lot of time you know and actually a lot of hours of each day and, and each day's sort of five days a week or or six as you as you were just saying um <laughs> but but with but, but within that like you say it might be that you know the school newspaper it might be the fact that you get the opportunity to edit a video these days because there are some schools who've got their own youtube channels and that kind of thing and it's taking it as a whole and focusing on that exactly as you said which is is absolutely key and and teachers are a big part of that aren't they in terms of being able to sort of um bring some of those things out certainly the good ones and and which teachers do you remember and what was it about them that you really think made such an impact probably my favorite teacher growing up was my high school computer science teacher and this is because well mostly because I'm a big nerd (laughs) and uh, in the mid 90s when I was in high school that is when I was learning to program and uh, I had this one teacher her name was Mrs. Tucker and I'm actually still in contact with her a little bit on Facebook But um, she was just an awesome teacher. She let us kind of figure out what we needed to do in the programming space. And um, she was just a really good teacher. I learned um, the Pascal programming language. I learned uh, basic. I learned C++. So believe it or not, I used to be a programmer. But I can remember one time I went back after I graduated high school. And I had already worked in the corporate world for a little while, I think. And I went back to the school because I was a substitute at the time. This is when um, we had actually, I had actually left my corporate job at this point. And I was substitute teaching, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Well, I happened to run into her at the school because I was substituting there that day. And I told her that I was thinking about going into education. And she's like, oh, you know, education is awesome. Like, I love it. But I really think you were meant to do something else. And I was like, hmm. You know, I never really thought about it. And I think maybe she just saw something in me that, you know, I was just, that wasn't necessarily what I was meant to do. So, you know, today I still teach people, but it's just in a different way. Yeah. So it's amazing how she taught you back then and then gave you that wisdom there. And that's what I like really all great teachers do. Right. And uh, I'm, I have a similar story. You know, I, I like, again, I was kind of a hellion. Right. Like I just I just I just was. I, I just don't like people telling me what to do, Mark. I just don't like it. I don't like to follow railroad tracks. I'm just not a big believer in people telling me what to do, right? So Opposites attract, right? That's right. Opposites attract. Yeah. Jocelyn's the rule follower. I'm the rule breaker. Yeah. Which she keeps me out of jail, and I bring her pushing along, right? <laughs> so, 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 so basically, I had this teacher, though. You know, most of a lot of the teachers in the building didn't like me too much because I was just, you know, I'd talk a lot in class and flirt and do all these things, and I wouldn't really do my schoolwork and whatever. Well, there was this one teacher uh, who taught political science and, and he really captivated me because he didn't teach. He argued with us, right? He was so debating and combative, with whatever he was teaching, but it was this perfect arena for me because he was encouraging me to express myself. He, he wanted to know my opinion, not just read me from this book. That's what everybody should learn, right? And he luckily was also the media teacher. He was the guy that was in charge of that media class where I got to be like the producer. So I can, I can remember his name was Mr. Crawford. And I used to sit down in the bowels of this school, high school that they had stuck the media place down in the basement of the library. It was like the lowest point in the whole building and no windows. It was just all this brand new editing equipment that they had. Uh, and then we used to edit on tapes like VCR tapes. So I had little knobs and I had to turn and rewind them in real time and cut them up and record them onto a third tape. And it was just this archaic system. It's still how you, you use software, but it's just tapes instead of digital. Right. And and I can remember one night we were sitting down there like seven o'clock. I was editing the show for the next morning and he stayed after school and he was sitting there reading the paper. Right. And he was just like hanging out with me because somebody had to be in the building while I was editing. And he was hanging out there and he looked over and he goes, Sam's, you really like this stuff, don't you? I go, I sure do. And he goes, I think you could do something like that someday. And it was the first time anybody had ever told me anything really besides go work for your family business or go to college, get a job, suck it up and retire. It was just basically like, hey, man, you like that. Did you know that you could do things that you like? People make money doing that. And like I and I just think back to that all the time, like, man, if he had never said that to me, like, I don't know if if that seed would have ever been planted that you can build a life around things you love. And that's exactly what we do today. Like we don't do anything we don't want to do. We build our business in a way that lets us maximize our talents and focus on our passions. Right. 
And that seed was planted by Mr. Crawford in the basement of that room. And it's, he's the only teacher that really ever encouraged me to say, hey, go live your own life. Don't just do what everybody else, don't do what the top 10 seniors say is successful, right? And I'm just so glad that he ever did that. Yeah, and I think the great thing is is the fact that it takes you away from the fact that it has to be something. You know, it's it's actually about the area, it's about the interest because, you know, these days, you know, as as podcasters, it's that kind of there's no tape involved, it's all digital and but you're still splicing things up, you're still making it fit together, you're still you're still creating something, but the essence is the same. And I think if you that's really reaffirming for people when they're listening, I think, is the fact that you don't know what that job will look like or even the area or the field that you're gonna end up in. But the passion, the, the interest of what you're doing will always be there. And then that gives you the freedom to adapt as and when it as and when it comes up in your life, I think. Well, when I did the media class, one thing that it was the, it was the first time in my life in school that I ever did something academically where time melted away. Like I would start editing. I had media last class of the day, so it probably started at like 2 p.m. And I remember I would look up and, and walk out and the sun would be going down. Right. And I was staying at school on purpose to do this thing. And I remember it didn't even feel like time had passed when I was playing with all this equipment and, you know, just thinking about, you know, what stories we were going to cover and planning and all that stuff. And and it was the first time that had ever happened in my life. And, you know, that's really what you want your work to be. If if you're looking at the clock and it's moving slowly, you might not be doing what you should be doing with your life. If you're looking up and the sun's going down and it was coming up when you got there, you're probably on the right path. Yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. Are you a teacher looking for support to create and develop music in your school? We have created Primary Music on Fire, taking the fear out of teaching by giving you the step-by-step skills and ongoing support you need. If you're a homeschooling parent and would like the opportunity to learn an instrument with your child on our five-day challenges, all of this is available through Primary Music on Fire. Go to educationonfire.com forward slash primary hyphen music and sign up to the newsletter. That's educationonfire.com forward slash primary hyphen music. Who did you admire when you were young and what was it about that person that had such an impact? So growing up, pretty much the only people I admired were pro wrestlers. <laughs> okay, so like, so I would I would watch professional wrestling all the time, like Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and like all these bigger than life superstars, right? And um, you know, even into my like college years and things like that, I would just admire these people and I would read magazines about their work ethic, right? These people were on the road, you know, three hundred and 40 out of 365 days a year they were hustling and showing up you know sometimes they would wrestle you know five six seven times in a weekend and you know on top of their actual job and being a performer and you know they had to like go in and work out and eat right and do all these things just to even maintain um, that appearance and then when wrestling got really really big like in the late 90s and early 2000s we got to like learn more about the, the, you know, wrestling is not per se real. We got to learn more about the real people behind the wrestlers. And you could see them like starting businesses, starring in movies, and just they seem to be able to accomplish more in their 24 hours than any other human beings that I watched, whether it was, you know, people in my life, coaches, mentors, whatever. They, they just seem to be able to do more. And it kind of like sparked my imagination, like, man, if that's possible, like, what could I do? Like, if they can be on TV every week and still look that healthy and still be that strong and they can still be that articulate on a microphone and, you know, and then they can be multifaceted and go act in a movie and then they can start a business, you know, as well on the side selling whatever, like, well, what else is possible? Like, what can a human actually achieve? So it sounds so funny, but like, you know, that's what I see when I see pro wrestlers. I don't just see the characters. I don't just see like, you know, the nonsense of, you know, ad- grown adults wrestling in their underwear. Right. Like, like, <laughs> I, like, like I, I see these prolific, prolific people who are pushing through pain every single day to do things that not everyone else is willing to do. And, um, you know, that was always that I drew a lot of inspiration from that, whether it was in the weight room, like in college and high school or you know, even just like in our, you know, business, pers- I still study people like uh, there's a really famous podcaster named Chris Jericho. Right. And Chris Jericho has a podcast network. He's a wrestler. He's a movie star. He does all these things. And I'm like, where does he find the time? How does he do this? And, 
Um, I just love to see, you know, very prolific, successful people like that. And that's kind of how who my heroes were. So for me as a child, I can remember always being obsessed with Amelia Earhart. And I know that she was dead before I was born, but um, I was always in the library a lot. I loved to read. And one of the things that I loved to read about was her. And I think the reason that I was drawn to her in particular is because she was going against the norm. In her time, women didn't fly planes, first of all. And they especially didn't fly them across the ocean. And, you know, she kind of broke the tradition. She set records. And then, of course, there was the whole mystery of her disappearance, which to this day is still a mystery. So I think that sort of sparked my interest in, first of all, going against the grain and doing something that's cool as a woman. And then also... I also love mysteries and, uh, you know, I, I still listen to true crime podcast and that, that type of thing. So that kind of fueled that fire. I think it's interesting you say that too, because like, like, you know, uh, we always say like some of our friends like don't get us like me and Jocelyn one, because we are like the most opposite human beings you could ever see hanging out <laughs> together in life. Uh, but two is like when we run our life, our life is literally 50, 50, you know, we are the co-CEOs of this business. We are the co-owners of this business. We are the co-parents. We are the co-teachers for homeschool. We are, you know, I mean, the, the sliding scale can dip 60, 40 either way at times, right? Just from organization. But, you know, Jocelyn really is like this, you know, bad mama jamma mama out there working and doing things. And sometimes our friends don't get us because we have a lot of friends that have very traditional relationships like, you know, the, the mom is doing one thing, the dad is working in the business. And when me and Jocelyn wa walk into a mastermind and it's like 14 men and Jocelyn, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, she's just sitting there dominating. And, uh, that, that, that Amelia Earhart stories, you know, makes sense. Yeah. It's amazing how all these things sort of come full circle, isn't it? When you can look back in hindsight. And I think that's why it's so important to, to keep on top of everything that you experience and everything that you feel, because it, it, it's intrinsically who you are. And that's what's going to develop as you, as you go through life. What was the best piece of advice you've ever been given and who gave it to you? You know, I, I always think back at this, this story when anybody asks me a question like this, you know, because we think of advice, we start, we start looking for motivational quotes or some, you know, kind of wise thing someone told us with a very specific reason to tell us and it kind of went through it but one time uh my dad called when i was a kid i couldn't have been i don't know how old i was i couldn't drive i was like 12 or 13 maybe my dad uh called home on a payphone because there were no cell phones back then <laughs> and he said <laughs> and he and i answered the phone i said what's up and he goes hey man i need you to come pick me up at walmart and i said walmart why? why what's wrong you got a flat tire or something and he said no i think somebody stole my car i go what and he said my car is gone my car is not here so get call your bro older brother and uh tell him to come get me i'm out of quarters so i can't call back so so you know it's like so i get my brother and we go pick him up and i remember like we were not we did not have a lot of resources at the time we did not have a lot of money at the time you know so like losing your car is bad right like that was our that was the car like we didn't have a car so I got my older brother. We went and picked that up. And I was so mad. I mean, I was just like furious. I remember it like one of the first times I was ever truly angry because someone had stolen from us. How dare they steal from us, especially our car, you know, our second most valuable possession. How was I going to get to school? How was I going to that was how's that going to get to work? All these things that you think in your head. Right. So I get there and I'll never forget. We're pulling up and dad sees us and he's just got this big grin on his face. Right. Like he's got this big smile. Like he's got he used to wear these. Uh, well, he still does. He wears these 80s Ray-Bans like <laughs> aviator glasses. And he had his like sport coat on or whatever. And uh, so he gets in the car and he's laughing and he starts joking about this guy stealing his car. And I remember going, Dad, dude, aren't you mad? Like, aren't you furious? You worked so hard to have a car and some bum, some thief stole your car. Some selfish person. Like, aren't you? aren't you mad? And, he, and, I, and I remember him turning back and looking at me in the car and saying, and he smiled and he was said, Shane, I'm not mad. Think about it. That guy was so desperate. He stole my car. He's probably just some poor boy trying to get home. And I remember him saying that. And I was like, so taken aback. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, the, the police called us from Cincinnati, Ohio, and they had found the car in perfect condition. I think I had like a ding on the mirror or something and it had just ran out of gas on one of the bridges so we go up there and we get the car we get it gassed up and we're driving back 
And I remember my dad looked back, uh, looked over at me, and he just straight face said, "See, man, that guy got home, and we got our car back." And I always, I always remember this moment because it taught me the most valuable lesson I think I've ever learned is to just have empathy for other people. Figure out why they're doing what they're doing. Don't be so mad all the time. Every, you know, don't don't put people in buckets like you know that poor piece of something that stole something from me, like. No, that's a guy that just was on a down on his luck. He did something wrong just to maybe get somewhere, right? Like always give people the benefit of the doubt. And uh, that's a story that I will, you know, from my father that I will actually take, you know, to the end of my life is, you know, calm down, be empathetic, look at why people are doing things and try to give them the benefit of the doubt. And it's going to be, it's going to make it so much easier to get through life uh, than being bitter and angry. It's lovely that, and I, and I think that just sort of overall understanding of everyone has a story going on, and you don't know what that is. And like, so you may never have met that person who stole the car, but it might be that there's someone in the store that just is sharp with you or, or doesn't give you the time of day, but you don't know what's going on in their life. And actually, just to think exactly like that, a bit of empathy, a bit of kind of, oh, I wonder, wonder where they are, what they're doing, and just move on with your day, then your life feels very different to you and i think that's the bit of control you have and so therefore that's a really powerful thing even the perspective of man you stole your car worst case scenario you're going to get a new one you know it's like it's not worth getting mad about because there's a solution and you know we say to our kids all the time like the only thing you can't solve is somebody dying right any other anything short of that we can find a solution so let's not worry about it let's not be anxious about it let's just deal with it and try to help as many people as we can along the way yeah i love it what advice would you give your younger self? So for me, I would say don't take life so seriously because that is something that I still struggle with to this day. Yeah, me me too. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, look for the good in things. I think that sometimes as an anxious person, I'm an introvert, I'm a very anxious person, I see the bad in things a lot and... You know, if I could talk to my younger self, I would just say lighten up and see the good in things. It's hard, though, because we talk a lot about learning and education and things like that. Like the world puts a lot of pressure on us to take things very seriously, to be very anxious and to set us up like if you don't get this right, you'll fail. Right. If you don't get the end of the college, if you don't get the job you want, if you don't do this or that or the other, your status is going to decrease and you're going to fail and you're not going to have the life that you deserve or should have had if you hadn't have screwed it up. Right. So it is really important to just be like, man, let's, we can all fail together. We can all get up together and don't freak out. Everything's okay. You know, it's funny because I think I would go back and tell myself, you might want to take things a little more seriously. You know what I'm saying? You're flirting with the edge (laughs) of the cliff there, buddy. (laughs) Well, what what I love about these conversations is, is that you know that they hear people like, like both of you, you know, so successful, li- living life on your terms, and at the same time, you know, you, the the story of, of of your your learning and your school experience, and you know, like you say, m- maybe you went a little bit close to the edge, but you weren't there on Sunday, so you know, you still had a little way to go. <laughs> I was in church on Sunday trying to repent <laughs> for all those things I did before. Jocelyn, oh, it's so funny though because uh, when Jocelyn and I met, like. You know, college are different. It was different. We met each other and we, you know, we fell in love at school and all that good stuff. But as I told, as I reveal, as we got more comfortable and I kind of told, you know, I was the jock in high school and I was kind of a punk. And then she was like, if I, I was had, the computer science nerd. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she was the salutatorian and all that stuff or whatever it is. No, I wasn't. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> National Honor Society and things like that. But uh, she, she's blatantly told me, she's like, you better be glad that I met you and I did. Because if I had met you two years prior, I would have never spoken to you at all. So because <laughs> it was just a totally different experience. Yeah. And what do you think your future looks like? I don't really know, to be honest. Um, It's sort of an open book at this point. You know, we've accomplished so many of the goals that we had initially set out. And at this point, my main goal is to travel more and to have more experiences. You know, I talked about that kind of more at the beginning of the show, how that's something that's really important to me. And, you know, our kids, they are now 10 and 8. And the first 10 years have flown by. And I know that the next seven or eight years will and you know it'll be time for them to go on to the next phase of their lives and I just want to make sure that we experience a lot of cool things with them 
Yeah, for uh, I'm in a mastermind group with a bunch of uh, a bunch of guys, and we try we talk about this a lot. And some of us, you know, some of the guys in the group are like, I've got my five year, my ten year, my fifteen year plan, right? Other guys in the group, it's kind of more like, well, I'd like to end up here, but right now I'm just kind of being in the moment. And that's where I find myself is just being in the moment. Like I'm not planning too far ahead. Um, you know, as your kids get older, it gets harder. Like every phase is hard. I thought, you know, they, everyone tells you when you first have a kid that the baby is the hardest part because you know, it is to sleep hard. and it is hard. It's very hard. But like we're finding that it's evolving so fast. We have to change our parenting style almost on a yearly basis now. And I'm just trying to live in the moment, man, not think too far ahead. You know, our, uh, we have a podcast called the Flip Lifestyle Podcast. We've got our community. We have a mission to, like, help other people do what we did, you know, find that entrepreneurial lane, get in it, start your business, work from home, like, do all these things. And that's really satisfying to me right now. So we're just really focused on growing our podcast, growing our community, homeschooling our kids, and, and just trying to figure out what's next. Because every time we try to predict it at this point in our life, we're wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> we just keep getting it wrong, like which direction we're going to go. So we're kind of just like in the moment. And uh, I'm trying not to look too far ahead. Being responsible is one thing, saving money, doing stuff like that. But I just don't like to plan that far ahead because we just don't know what the next day is going to bring anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. I think that kind of, you know, I want it to feel like it's feeling now and I want it to be and I want I know where I want to put my energy. I think that's a great way to, to look at the future rather than, like you say, in five years I'm going to have this house or this amount of money. Because like you say, there's a curveball coming either way. So you may as well just chill out about it and, and go with what you what you feel. And I think that's that's really, really great advice. So just to, to wrap up, what podcast, book, video, film, or song, or, or any resource has had the biggest impact on your life, and why was that? You know, I, um, honestly, like I could, I could talk to a lot of our favorite like, like shows and podcasts. Of course, um, one thing we always point to is the Smart Passive Income podcast with Pat Flynn, um, big inspiration in our world. But I've, it's so many books that you point to, like the Four Hour Work Week, and you know things like that. But really, listening. To content is probably what changed our life more than anything else. Like getting into podcasts and listening to audiobooks and taking back time in your schedule. Maybe it's a commute. Maybe you're on the train or you're in a car in an Uber every day or you know, you're driving to work on a 45 minute commute or something like that. Like just listening to podcasts and getting rid of all the fluff in your life. Like, you know, we don't I don't listen to a ton of music. I do sometimes, but most of the time I'm listening and learning. And um, just listening to audio based content has made the biggest difference in our life because it's you can just consume so much content. You can see and hear so many things that are possible and you can learn. I mean, you can listen to some audio books and get a master's degree level education just on the, your commute. Right. So I would say just the transitioning from, you know, the old white ways we used to consume things, television sitting down and reading a book and carving out time for it to no, I have an hour and a half commute. I've got a workout. I've got, I could be listening to stuff two or three hours a day. Like that's been the biggest difference um, in my life is just transitioning to an audio based learner. And uh, man, I can't tell you how many days of the week I get inspired just from like listening to your podcast and hearing one random thing. And then I go take action on it and something amazing happens in my life. Like you just don't get that in any other form of media. So um, other than a specific thing, I would point to just like get into podcasts and audiobooks and uh, really think about what you're consuming. Make sure it's not all entertainment based. As some of it is inspirational, educational and informative so you can take action on that stuff in your own life. I think that's fantastic, and I'm I'm a big believer in that. I spend all my time in the car, just going, oh, right, and the next episode's out, and it's popped up, <laughs> and, and away you go. And it's it is that kind of because it just transforms everything about what you're doing, and you can feel like you're you're growing, that you you're learning, that you're being part of a community. Even like say these days, you know, we're halfway around the world from each other, but actually still part of the same thing, and and that certainly from my point of view you know from you guys being able to to sort of inspire me from the stuff that you're producing and the content you've got and the community that you've built um even so many miles away it still feels very natural it feels very personal and, and you can get that just by listening like say in a time which you could actually just be thinking about nothing at all and, and so the options are there for you to to change your life just just by doing exactly that and i, I absolutely love that answer it's brilliant the, uh, and what's amazing is just how like the, the audio content is the most intimate content too because uh, um, 
I can't remember if we talked about it on this, or maybe we talked about it when you were on our podcast, which everybody needs to check out. But uh, we, uh, when we first met each other in person, I saw you, I recognized you, and I said, hey, man, what's up, Mark? And then we gave each other a hug. And like you just don't hug strangers, you hug people you know, right? Yeah, so it's absolutely. like it's like getting that relationship, hearing you talk on your show, hearing me talk on my show, and then you get in person, and uh, it just it's just an amazing thing. And hey, man, you know the the world is a much smaller place now thanks to all this stuff. Yeah, it really is. And so for those people who are just itching to find out more about you and and, and the business that you have built up and everything, what's the best place for them to go and check it all out? Yeah, the best place is on our podcast. We have a podcast that comes out every single Tuesday. It's called The Flipped Lifestyle Podcast uh, by Shane and Jocelyn Sams. And uh, you can check that out on uh, iTunes or over at FlippedLifestyle.com. And uh, we'd love for you to become a member of the Flipped Lifestyle audience. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Shane and Jocelyn. It's been wonderful sharing your wisdom and hearing your wisdom, allowing us to learn from your wonderful experiences. All right. Thank you so much for having us. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I just wanted to remind you that we have some free downloadable English and literacy resources that have been given to us very kindly by teachingpacks.co.uk. If you go to our website, educationonfire.com, and in the top menu, click on blog, you will see each week I've been putting a free resource for you to download and explore to help you in your classroom. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to chatting to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Learning on Fire podcast. For more information, please visit educationonfire.com and follow the links from the homepage. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.